Welcome back to the show, everyone. We have such an awesome guest today. I can't wait for you to meet her. In her mid-50s, listen to this awesome story, and newly liberated after ending her 25-year marriage to a controlling husband, Linda rebuilds her life one step at a time as she rediscovers her love of hiking in New Hampshire's White Mountains. But when her ex-husband is arrested for unspeakable crimes, whoa, she must cope with the guilt, shame, and sadness that comes from having a link to someone so infamous. In Live Free and Hike, Finding Grace on 48 Summits, what a great title, Magoon shares how hiking the high peaks helped in her transition from a place of pain to one of healing, resilience, and grace, one mountain summit at a time. What a great story. And that's just the, that's just your bio. <laughs> There's so much to unpack there. Linda, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having having me, Wendy. It's great yes. to be here. Yes. Oh my. And before we hit record, discovered we have so much in common besides hiking also RVing right. and most importantly making over our midlives in our 50s which is the best time to do it absolutely so tell everyone a little bit more about your story what you do and how you got to this point of you know what I'm gonna get a divorce and go hiking yeah, so I, you know, as it stated in the bio, I was married for about twenty-five years uh, to a person who was, uh, you know, I, I think some people in in my book call it a, an abusive marriage. I, mm. I call it a controlling marriage, mm. in that, uh, you know, asking for something or wanting something uh, was almost impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, because I would be subject to, you know, bouts of silence and poutiness. Uh, he was mm. extremely jealous, extremely insecure. You know, I had to be very strategic as to what, it, what I wanted and, and in terms of, of communicating mm. that to him, right? Like walking on eggshells. Exactly. That's oh, exactly, gosh. What it's, it's exactly what it's like. And it's like, you know, if you've ever been hiking and you have a, a rock in your boot <laughs> and after a while, you just kind of get used to like walking with this rock yeah. in your boot. It's wrong. You know, you should take the time to take your boot off and take the rock out. But that's how my marriage was. It mm. was it, it was dysfunctional. I, I knew it was. But I didn't tell anyone. Uh, everybody mm. thought things were fine. Um, and so mm. one, one September uh, night, uh, we, had a, we had a little dog who was uh, aging and she was getting mm. older and she needed to go out probably two or three times a night. And of course, I was the one that did it. And during a, I was just so exhausted from the from the work week I asked my husband if he would take it out take her out and I received this this uh, instant uh swearing you know uh, at me just and it was for no reason and at that point that was my tipping point that, that was your that I, was your like straw that broke the camel's back exactly it, like, took a long, it took a very long time to, for me to get there but that I, even then it's like you know what i am not doing anything wrong this is not my fault yeah and so that was the point where i i said that's it i'm i'm filing for divorce good for I you was, you know i had to uh for the first time i went out and sought a therapist i had never seen a therapist before i went and found one and and with her help, uh, we put into place the steps for for leaving and leaving safely and what that looked mm. like and for filing for divorce. And and six months later, I was I was on my own. And so, you know, shortly after the divorce, I thought, well, this is I can do what I want. It was just it was like mind -blowing. Yeah. It was so liberating to to be able to say, wait a minute, I don't have to ask for permission to, you know, go out. Yeah. 
you know, with, with a girlfriend or, you know, that I, freedom, to, like just the, yeah, yeah being or independent and yeah. Or I don't have to like say, Hmm, I wonder if he's in a good mood. So maybe I can go to the movies with a girlfriend tonight. You know, it wasn't that, none of that stuff. I could just go. And it sounds crazy, but uh, that's, that's the life I lived for a very long time. Uh, wow. So I, one, one very nice uh, August afternoon, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go hiking. Mm. And and I don't have to ask for permission. And I and I went, and it was, it was an eight mile round trip. It it was a challenge for me, but but I I did it, and I felt so good. I felt so good because I went out and got some exercise and got some fresh air. I I set out a little goal and I accomplished it. I thought yeah. this this is a lot of fun. You know, you know, I was reading through the guidebook. I discovered that there were 47 more mountains that were this high, that were 4,000 footers in New Hampshire. I thought, you know what? I'm going to tackle that list. I'm going to do all 48 4,000 footers and belong to this 4,000 footer club and write a book about it. And it was, you know. It's oh, my God, was, that is amazing. Yeah. So, and the, you know, the goal of the book was to inform and inspire. You know, here I am in my mid fifties, you know, I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm wearing all the wrong clothes. I'm wearing cotton, <laughs> you, know, you know, people are looking at me like I'm like, I'm, you know, who <laughs> is this lady yeah. out here hiking? <laughs> what is she doing? Yeah, I've got this walking, uh, this old walking stick and uh, this old musty canvas backpack. And, uh, but I'm, I'm learning with each hike. I'm learning a little bit more about how to dress and what to carry and, and what to do to keep safe out in the woods. And and I just kept plugging away at it, and uh, just I never lost never lost focus, and I never lost interest because you know every every new peak, there's something new to see, there's something new to discover, uh, whether it's about the mountain or about yourself, right? Mm. Uh, so I had about uh, thirteen or fourteen peaks that I had climbed out of the forty eight. And in uh, May of 2016, I mm -hmm. I received a voicemail from from a friend of mine that that said, "Geez, I'm I'm so sorry about your ex husband. Let me know what I can do." And mm -hmm. I didn't know what the voicemail was referring to. I didn't know uh, if he had been in an accident or mm -hmm. or or if he had died or or so I didn't know. So yeah. So on my phone, I, I I pull up our our local news station and I found out that he had been arrested and charged with child molestation. Oh my God. Yeah, it was very um it's Is, difficult for sure. Was this going on uh do you do you know was this going on during the marriage too or just after? So it took it took a while for the story to unfold. But eventually I did find out that it did take place, I would think maybe the last two or three years of the marriage approximately. Mm. Uh, so it was something that had, uh, it did occur while we were married, but I think after the divorce, I think that behavior accelerated. I, I think wow. it was until, yeah, until he was, until he was caught. Wow. Yeah. How did how did that make you feel when like when you found out that news? Well, I, well, of course, I mean, I think when when you receive something that's so devastating like that, yeah, that it's it's akin to going through the stages of grief. Yeah, I yeah. About, I talk a, a little bit about that in the book where where your your first initial reaction is just shock, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do I tell my family? And then this and then there's a this denial. It's like well, this can't be true. This is going to be some, some mistake. Yeah, exactly. Was, you know, he was, uh, he was the, he really was the, a, a pillar of the community. He was a retired police officer. Wow. He had received some accolades from where he worked for his, his work with, with youth. And, um, it, nobody could believe it. Everybody was in shock and, and no one could believe it. And so, you know, uh, you know, I was the same way. And unfortunately, when, when you're the, uh, family member or an ex family member of a perpetrator, you really have no seat at the criminal justice table. You're not a victim per se. And so the only information I could obtain was mostly from the newspaper. Mm. I had a few other sources, but most of it was from the media. 
And that was a, a terrible way to, to find things out, especially if I missed a headline and somebody else found out before I did, they, you know, they would come up to me and say, Hey, I heard your ex-husband was indicted mm -hmm. or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I had no idea. So that lack of that lack of information and also just the lack of support. Um, this was something that was totally uh, unrelatable. You know, this, yeah. Yeah. You know, I look, I look for a support group for, for you know, family. <laughs> yeah. There's not many support groups. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's, no, there's no support, Wendy. There's, there's yeah. no support out there. Oh. And so, you know, I was luck luckily I was engaged with, uh, with my therapist who's, who's very good. And mm. also with a, with a life coach. Yes. Because once previous, I had taken a, like a six week workshop on how to define your dreams and, and write affirmations and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, that was really a turning point for me was taking that workshop uh, bec and between the life coach and my therapist, I had a good foundation in place to, to get me through. Uh, it was, uh, I think the, the total number of victims, uh, I think were, or that were, that came forward. I'm sure there were more, were, I think were nine. And, wow. and that spanned that three awesome. trials over three years. So thank God you got it. out of that marriage before that whole thing came about. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think I spent a lot of time and still do sometimes going back and saying, what did I miss? You know, what, yes, what, what, right. what clues, what, you know, what did I, you know, were there any clues? And, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, in a lot of ways, it's like, it. okay, you, like, yes. he, you knew he was toxic and, and his, um, even though he was in some ways very unpredictable in his behavior, in a lot of ways, he was very predictable, right? Because like, even though you were walking on eggshells, you still had an idea he was going to come back at you in some rude way. But this was probably, whoa, like not even expected right um, in mean, his was, behavior yeah this was entirely something very different from from being selfish and insecure and jealous and mm -hmm. controlling uh this is an, an entirely different set of behaviors uh, yeah. yeah so yeah. it's again so great that you had that aha moment to get out of the relationship and doing all of this work like you built that foundation and be you already started to rebuild your life so that not that it was easy to get that news, but at least you were already like feeling stronger about yourself that you could be like, okay, well, I've already got my freedom and my life here that I can still keep moving on. So like, I think you said when you found out the news, you were at what summit 14 about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So how did you, was it easy to get back into it? Were you like, oh my God, I just can't wait to get back on the trail and get back on the mountains or were you like, I can't do it. Were you, you, cause like you said too, you went through some type of grieving process, which is totally understandable. Like you're grieving for someone that even, uh, that who you thought he was and he yeah. wasn't. Yeah. 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 No, I, I kept hiking, uh, throughout all of this. Um, uh, it was a way to, uh, stay, stay focused on something. I, you know, I, I could get out of bed and, and have something to look forward to. Or, yeah. And so that was that was really so important. And mm -hmm. also I think just getting outside and getting some exercise, it didn't even have to be a 4,000 footer, was really important for self-care uh, mm -hmm. because there were, I think that first week I, I didn't sleep at all. So yeah. it's really hard to hike when you, when you cannot sleep or eat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> been there, done that, I know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that was, you know, it was important to keep hiking, and it was a way to to cope with the, with the uh, the grief, and yeah. the and and for me, you know, uh, I was I never really got angry. Sometimes mm -hmm. I did, but for most, mm -hmm. for the most part, my my biggest emotion was just the tremendous sadness of it yeah. all. Yeah. 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 You know, um, one thing that came to mind, there's that quote by Lao Tzu that says a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Right. And mm -hmm. I think about like with your life and, you know, that moment you had that, you know, about taking the dog out and he's yelling at you and you decide like, okay, I'm going to take this step. 
Uh, let me ask you something. How how long before that did you think about, I got to get out of this marriage. I got to get out. I got to get out. Or were you kind of like in that mindset of, I got to make this work. I got to make this work. Yeah, that's a great question. Statistically, uh, women who are, who are in abusive relationships, mm -hmm. they they make the attempt at least six or seven times before they actually go through with it. Mm. And I found that to be the case with me also. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think I, I reached six or seven, but there were times when I would go to the courthouse and get the divorce papers. Mm. And I would look at them and they were so overwhelming to fill out. I was, it, it was, it was like, no, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm better off with the devil, you know, and yeah. so I would put them aside or yeah. I would try to work out the numbers financially and think mm. I, I can't live on my own. I, I'd mm. be living in a cardboard box. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. and so it's, well, I'll just stay in the marriage. So yes, I had, th there had been, there had been previous events. I mean, mm. even, even within the first year or two of the marriage that should have, yeah. you know, it should have been a red flag, but mm. you know, I was brought up in a, in a culture of, you know, till death to you part. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, you know, you, you made your bed and now you lie in it. Yeah. And so that's what I lived mm -hmm. until finally it's like, you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm 55. I, I cannot go on living like this anymore. Yeah. Because you're that's really dying. All, you're dying on the inside. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And you don't realize, yeah. you don't realize how badly you've, you've withered on the vine until you, until you start over. It's like, Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what, what is how normal people live? Oh, okay. I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> what are some things about yourself that you realized after you got out of the relationship, out of the marriage, you started like rebuilding your life. What are some things about you that you noticed kind of like, Instead of the onion, we usually use like the metaphor of the onion, like peeling it with the layers. I like to say an artichoke because at least you get to the heart. Yeah. So, but what are some of those layers that started to peel off that you either intentionally were trying to peel off or they just organically came off? What were some of the things that you noticed that like, oh, there, like there I am, like, okay, I've been missing, like there's Linda, like there I am. What are some things that you noticed that changed about you? Sure. So I think back in, in December, I had, it, this was my first uh, post-divorce Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had a real Christmas tree and I could put up what I wanted and decorate how mm -hmm. I wanted. And as I was taking those ornaments down and packing them up because it's, it's just before the new year, I was, I was rolling them up in newspaper and I saw an ad for a workshop that said, be the best you. And it was a, a six week workshop by, by a life coach in which it would help me like define my dreams and, and, and uh, take steps to achieve my goals. And I thought, you know what, this, this is sounds perfect. Because wow. That is I so don't, cool. like, like the thought of like, th this was something I never could have done while I was married. Are you kidding me? Leave for oh. one night a week for six weeks. Yeah, Not actually. Really. Yeah. Like what, yeah. what, why would you go make yourself better? Right. Like I'm sure he yeah, would be totally exactly, against yeah, exactly. that. <laughs> but it's like, you know what I have, I have, I've got nobody that's holding me back now. I, I can go to this workshop. And so for the first time ever, I learned about the law of attraction and, and what you bring about, you bring, what you think about you, what you bring, bring about, about yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and creating a vision board and writing affirmations and, you know, practicing gratitude. It, it, this was all brand new stuff. All never had heard of it before because, because wanting something in my marriage had consequences. Mm. Right. So, yeah. God forbid yeah. if Linda is happy, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? so, yeah. So I had I had all of this material, and that's that. You know that that helped me uh, in my journey to to hiking all of these peaks and and ultimately writing the book. Because on the first day of class, we had to write on a post-it note what our dream was 
Mm. And so I wrote that, you know, finish the 48, 4,000 footers and write a book about it. And so I, you know, we had to post that post-it note on the wall. And for the first time ever, you know, I wrote it down and I shared it with the world, which as you know, is huge when it comes to oh. setting goals and, and achieving dreams, right? Is, yep. is putting it in writing because now it's real and, and scary yeah. <laughs> and sharing yeah. it with the world, which is yeah. really scary. It is. It and, is. Yeah. And yeah. here we are now sharing our voices with the world, which is right. like so crazy. Right. right. And so and, you know, I was uh, naturally a private person. I'm, I'm an introvert. And and so the idea that I'm sharing this with the class was was a huge uh, step for me. And yeah. also sharing my story, especially when it came to my ex-husband, and especially asking for help was a huge step for me. Mm. Um, and that was because uh, you know I couldn't have I couldn't have gone through the following three years without the support of family and friends because it's a journey you don't want to make alone for sure. Yeah. So those were the those were the big changes for me is is uh, sharing how I feel, you know. Uh, practicing self-care yeah um, you know, what what that looks like mm -hmm. you know having you know I learned uh rather than being reactive like because I never knew what the next step of the of the criminal process was until I read mm -hmm. about it in a paper mm -hmm. and it was it's very um uh, being very reactive is very uh for me it was it would set me back yeah. Because I didn't know who knew mm. uh, about this. You know, when you work with 300 plus people, you don't know who knows and who, who, and who doesn't. Right. So when a headline made the paper, I would, uh, I would go you know, emotionally three steps back. Yeah. You just totally want to lose your shit. Yeah. And sadness and shame and grief. Yeah. And then I learned that if I, if I just called the court, and just got to and just tried to stay on top of of where mm. things were or looked online and tried to stay ahead of the story mm. that I could almost anticipate when when a story would break and it would hit the paper and I would be emotionally ready for that. Yeah. You'd had to be and, like proactive and exactly. Reactive. And it was yeah. and it was very empowering to do that. It wow. was like, oh, because I don't have an advocate. I, I don't, I'm not a victim. There's no at no one advocating for me. Yeah. yeah, you definitely have an angel. That's for sure. I think I've I mean, how, I just say like I got goosebumps when you told the story about the newspaper when you're wrapping up the the Christmas ornament. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what if you had not seen that, you know, like if you had not been mindful and you were just like blah, 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 putting it back in the box and not paying attention. Yeah, that is just so cool. Like the series of events that happen, you can like everything just kind of lay it out. Like the red carpet was like, here you go. Even though you had obviously a huge hiccup there when right. you found out the news with your ex. But right. so how did you how did you keep going on for the rest of that 48 summit? Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to think that 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 workshop and and and, um, mm -hmm. you know, becoming engaged in that was the universe's way of, of setting the foundation for what was to come. Yeah. Because once, once it became obvious to me that this was no mistake that, yeah. you know, once, once multiple victims started to come forward, I realized that this was, uh, this was not going to go away. And, mm. uh, mm. you know, and, and I didn't, I didn't feel the need to defend him. But I also I also couldn't help the the prosecution either because I I knew nothing I I had right. no no involvement in this criminal process at all. Mm. Uh, but I ended up going back to this uh, particular life coach uh, several times over the following three years, mm -hmm. and we just uh, at first it was just the simplest of of uh, affirmations mm -hmm. like uh, you know I'm in charge of how I feel and act. And I'm not to blame. Yeah. You know, just, just the really back to yep. basics, you know, uh, sleep hygiene, you know, what, what, what does it look like to get more than two or three hours of sleep? 
Yeah. And um, really, really small, tiny steps. Mm -hmm. And as I started to move forward and become a little more uh, functional, we started mm -hmm. looking at bigger things. Like I've, I always wanted to live in a log home, always. Mm -hmm. That was like my dream. And so later on, we defined what that would look like. And I'm living in my log home right now. Ah! So, yeah, it's so cool. Yep. And, and I just, then throughout this all, I mean, there would be times where a month or two would go by where I, I didn't do a hike, but it was always, it was always in front of me. You know, I had a, hmm. I had a giant topo map, right? You're a hiker, you know what a topo map yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Map of all the 48 peaks and I had it hanging up on a wall. And is that what's behind you right now? What is that? Uh, this is a, the, the map that's behind me is actually uh, the all of the summit signs for all of the 48 oh. peaks that my niece and nephew gave me for. Oh, for, I love yeah. it. That yeah. is so, so cool. Yeah. But, yeah. So I, but, you know, this it was a form of visualization. Every time I, I yep. hiked a peak, I would stick a push pin into the into the mountain and it was fun to look at all of the mountains that I had climbed and I would wake up in the morning and say, okay, this is the one I want to do next and study the guidebook. Uh, I did some of them uh, with, with uh, friends and coworkers, but the majority I did alone. Uh, what about uh, that 48th one? How did you, how did you? Yeah. Think? So, you, I, you know, I don't want to give away the, the, the book, but I, <laughs> I, I did enlist the help of my backpacking niece and her husband to help me finish the last four oh. because it was a very uh, strenuous hike and it was oh. a traverse uh, where you start at one end and finish at the other. And so it was necessary to do an overnight trip, but yeah, 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 it was, it's it so crazy. inspiring. Thank you. Yeah. It is. I mean, do you like, do you realize that as you look back, like even when you tell your story, do you realize the, the impact, the impact on your own life and the impact that you can have on even the people that are listening right now? Well, uh, gosh, I hope so. And yeah, and I, I want to emphasize to your viewers and to yeah. your listeners that you don't have to, you know, hike Mount Shasta or, you know, yeah. uh, you know, Kilimanjaro or whatever high summit is in your state, you know, just, just go out yeah. for a hike in the woods. It's so, to me, yeah. that was really helped me uh, with my mental health for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I tell you, as a hiker myself, um, I, it's funny, like every time I get out there, what I find it's very meditative, mm. right. And I'm not, I love meditation, but I'll admit, and if you can only imagine with as crazy as my mind can be and blah, 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 like sometimes just sitting there in meditation is like, wah, wah, wah. And I was telling her like, you don't, meditation doesn't have to be just sitting in lotus position and right. Like you don't have to do that. Meditation can be yoga or hiking. And, and one thing I noticed about hiking though, is that especially if it's a pretty challenging trail, like, or if there's rocks or there's like, well, I was just in um, the Redwood Forest and there's tons of like the roots that are coming up through the trail. So you have to really pay attention to how you're walking. Otherwise you'll be like flat on your face, but it's very medicine because like you can't think, which is the point of meditation. You can't even hold the thought sometimes because you're so concentrated on taking one step and then another and then another. And so that's what I, I love about hiking. And then of course, just being in nature, you know, and it's like, we all, we're all caught we sitting in our cubicles or we're in our houses. We're sitting, you know, watching Netflix. It's like getting back out into nature and that energy and just being, it's so fascinating to me. Yeah, that it is, it yeah. is rejuvenating and, you know, you know, it can just be a walk in the park or a walk around yeah. the block. Yep. But what I found interesting is that on these longer hikes, when you're starting out, you have all this monkey chatter in your head, you're, <laughs> you're worried about your leaky faucet in your tax bill or what's, <laughs> or the, the worry of the day. But as you, but as you climb progressively higher, all of that stuff falls away. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, if, you know, if you're concentrating on a particularly gnarly trail, you have to, you have to be in the moment. Yeah. Or else uh, you find yourself uh, in a, in a spot. Or yep. you know, if you're crossing a stream, extreme crossings, 
especially like here in New Hampshire, uh, the, the water is very high now, yeah, and, uh, which is unusual for this time of year. And you have to have your wits about you. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. this you know you you have to really be focused and in the moment and and get across that stream safely, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know a lot of our mountains do involve stream crossings. Uh, that's, yeah, that's which, which just, makes uh, you really think. I mean, it's good for your brain, obviously, right. health health wise, makes you like really think. So if someone's, you know, someone's out there listening and they're really wanting to make a huge change in their life, whether that be get out of a relationship, get out of their, the job that they can't stand or maybe move to a new place, something like that. What, what do you recommend for them of where to start, how to start, what to do? Cause I, I find that people become kind of like paralyzed, like analysis is paralysis, right? right? So then therefore, like you said, like they just go right back into the relationship, right back into, let me go back right. to work the next day. It's probably easier, right. easier to not change than to change. Yeah. So I, I, I personally, I, I come from the, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> That's my divorce theme song is slow learner. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, but but my personal philosophy is to is to start small, start where you are, and start what you know. Start from a small place. You know, yeah, you don't have to. If if you want a divorce, you know, maybe maybe you pick up a a book on divorce and start mm -hmm. reading it, or maybe you go to a website, or maybe you th maybe you th think about what that would look like, or or engage in a in a life coach, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, or some counseling and. Uh, because that's yep. what I did. But, and I found that once I, my mind was made up and I started seeing a therapist, there was no going back. I never once yeah. thought that I was going to go back. And yeah. the most difficult from, thing for me during that process was, was telling him that, that I was going through with it because I had said it before. Right. And he was like, ever, Oh yeah, sure. Sure. Linda. Ever came mm -hmm. I didn't tell mm -hmm. him I was seeing a therapist. But once I, once, once, once that, you know, once I overcame mm -hmm. that initial inertia and made the decision, there was it, it, things just, just um, mm -hmm. accelerated. I mean, yeah. I, was, I was divorced in six months. I was done. It was out. We were, we were, yeah. uh, which is. Yeah. And that's the thing too. It's like, once you put, you know, just like the law of attraction, once you put that energy out there, everything was like the universe is like, here you go. Here you go. Here's the next right. thing. Here's the next right. thing. Here's a little newspaper clipping that you're going to see. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and you're going to need this workshop because yeah. it's going to change in a huge way. Um, so eight, let me ask you something. So going back to like that workshop where you had to write your, your dream there on the, the sticky note, right? What would you write right now since you have this book and that was already, oh. yeah. Yeah. So I, so right now I'm uh, trying to figure out what to do in retirement. I'd, I'd like to retire in the next few years and what that looks like. Uh, like one of my big dreams was to uh, buy an RV and, <laughs> and travel the country. Once I retired, travel the country in an RV. And then when the pandemic hit, I was, I became very jealous jealous and very resentful yeah. of all these people buying rvs it's like wait a minute you're you're yeah. yeah that's my dream i've been doing i've been dreaming this now for 10 years and uh you know, you're, that's, that's way i was like dang it, i was already gonna do that you i was gonna yeah, I, I, I was gonna do it before it uh. was popular so you know what i uh a, a co-worker yeah. said you know why are you waiting why don't you just do it now and yeah. that's exactly what I did. I went out and purchased a little travel trailer and a, and a little truck to pull it around in. And so I'm a, I'm not a full timer. I'm a, I'm a yeah. weekend warrior, but I just absolutely love it. I love exploring oh. places. And, and, as, and I think if you're an RVer, it really teaches you a lesson in resilience and you have <laughs> to be totally unflappable because something is going to break, something is going to go wrong, something yep. is going to leak and, and you need to be resourceful and have your wits about you. And yeah, you know, you're so right. I don't, <laughs> yeah, we talked about this before we hit record yeah. and yeah, RV life. It's like some people are like, Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Like it still has its challenges, but 
the challenges are so rewarding, right? Even, I mean, I can remember there was one time like the power went out on one side of the RV and I found out through like a kajillion manuals and, you know, made so many phone calls and I finally figured out, it was like this tiny little switch that's yeah. way on the very back of the generator that I had to flip on. And I was like, oh, that's it. But then I was like, oh my God, I just did that. I just it's, figured it out, you know? So it's, it's so funny. empowering. And, yeah. yeah. And just yeah. like going... You know, whether it's a tiny little switch on a generator or hiking a summit, it's just yeah. those little tiny things, whether big or small, it doesn't matter. It's just like that's right. I tell everyone, I'm like, just start making like you don't I can't give you a jar of courage. I can't just like, oh, here you go. Here you go, Linda. Here's a jar of courage. You fill the jar of courage of your own by doing things, by taking action, yeah. by like right. signing up for a workshop or going to see a therapist or getting those divorce papers signed, like little by little, step by step, you get there. And it's just, it's amazing. You know, like I, 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 I love hearing your story because it's, it really is a, even the, like a slow breakdown, but then all of a sudden it was like, boom, total breakthrough. Right. right. Yeah. I think, I think what you just said yeah. is uh, one of my favorite quotes and that is yeah. action is rewarded. Yes. No matter how small it, yep. it, it is. I mean, if, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. matter what, what the, what the goal is or what your task is or what you're facing. Just, I think any yeah. action is, is, is rewarded. Yeah. You're so right. And then also, you know, it's like, uh, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created the problem. So like we, going back to what you were saying before about, even those simple affirmations, you were changing that voice in your head to speak kind words to yourself, to give you encouragement. You became your own cheerleader. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, people can support you and yep. they can encourage you, but at the end of the day, you're, you're the one that has to do yep. the work. Yeah. Yeah. There you are right in front of you. It's like, you're yep. the one that has to, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's taking responsibility for, all of you and then not in a guilty or shameful way but uh like okay all right girl what you gonna do right right you know yeah so, so you're living my dream when, yeah you're living my dream when you're traveling the country in an rv uh, we need to yeah we need to hang out we can absolutely yeah i would love to do like fireside chats you know oh that'd be so should, cool all right oh, meet up. One in oh, person meet up. yeah yeah. yeah. I actually like when, whenever my book comes out, um, I actually like, I'm going to be doing a book tour in the RV and invite people to like for a fireside chat, they get a, a, a signed book. We'll eat s'mores and just oh, that's so chat. Cool. Right? Yeah. That's Fine. a great idea. Yeah. I think I'll be, hauling, that idea. <laughs> I'll be hauling a ton of books, but you know, like gotta do what you gotta do. That's too uh, so where can we find you? So sure. So my, uh, my book is called Live Free and Hike, Finding Grace on 48 Summits. And the uh, Live Free and Hike is a nod to our New Hampshire state motto, which is live free or die. So that's a little little takeoff on our motto. And uh, so you can find my book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever books are, are sold. And I have a website. It's I'm very proud of it. I thought of the name all by myself. It's uh, lindamagoon.com, M-A-G-O-O-N. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have a little Facebook page. It's called uh, Linda Magoon Author uh, on, oh. on Facebook. So, yeah. So it's well, you know, it's nice that that domain was available, Linda Magoon. And then, you know, there's no other Linda Magoon out there. <laughs> oh, there's, oh, there's, oh, there's plenty of them. Uh, there are a ton of them out there, but nothing. Uh, it's th nothing like you. Yeah, yeah thankfully. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am so proud of you. I'm excited. I, I feel like... Uh, just innately, I feel like there's something else big around the corner for you. Some good oh, thank stuff. You. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't tell that to everybody, but oh, thanks. I really, thanks. yeah. You, you're you're on a roll. Oh my oh, god. Well, thank you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, it took about. It took three years for me to to do all forty eight four thousand footers. I finished. Oh. I finished within three days of my ex husband's final appeal. So, you know, it's, it's all in the, it's all in the book. It's, it's <sighs> weird how it just bookended like that. Totally random. And it took another couple yeah. of years to write the book and have it published. Yeah. Yeah. Random. But I also think like it all happened in perfect order. Isn't that you know? weird? 
it's just so, so wild. Yeah. You'll have to come hiking with me in Portugal because I live in I live in Madeira, Portugal, half the year when I'm not nice. not cruising around. <laughs> <laughs> that's rv <laughs> so you'll, yeah we'll have to go hiking absolutely yeah i'll take Aww. you up a, i'll take you up a four thousand foot of winter you'll love it all right thank you so much linda all right thank you for having me all right thank all you right. all right